Hey, it's Guido coming at you with a tactics talk. Thanks for tuning in. Your support helps the channel go. I really appreciate it. Here is my fifth and final review on the Tier 9 Scouts. The other four were upgraded from Tier 8. The WZ-132 Alpha is actually a new tank. The WZ-132 did not get moved up from 8 to 9. Although it is very similar to the WZ-132, the model is slightly different. We'll take a look at it in comparison to its peers. You can see on the bottom left there, then we will go into the tech tree, talk a little bit about that. I'll jump into a comparison amongst the five of them, and then we will look at how I have mine set up. And from there, we'll go to a gameplay example. So you can see that the WZ-132 Alpha is right in front of you. Comparatively, it looks a lot like a T-54 Lightweight, basically the Russian clone kind of idea. We'll talk about how they are not similar because it is important a little bit later. The T-49, a little bit taller, a little shorter. The RU, kind of a similar length, maybe a little shorter, and of course you've got the tiny little 1390. So it is a fairly large tank, and one thing you'll notice right away is it's got a great big old gun sitting on there. And we'll talk about how that's different from the rest of them in just a minute as well. Let's go ahead and jump into the tech tree. Good news here is it's fairly simple as far as the Chinese go. You're going to go through the VAE, the Chiha, the Stuart, and the Type 30. Type T-34. When you get to the Stewart, you're going to jump into four crew. There are four here as well, but there's three in the VAE and two. But once you get past Tier 1 and 2, you hit Tier 3. It's four crew for this line all the way through. So you won't have any merry-go-rounds on crew. If you're going to move them up, you can move all four. I'm not 100% certain whether they are the same format. That would be a good thing to know. So you get into 5916, 131, 132. When you get to the 132, the good news is you can jump down to the WZ-120. So if you want to come up through the scout line and then open up to N tier, tier 9, and tier 10s, the best way would be to go through the WZ-132. The 34-1 and 34-2 are pretty indifferent as far as mediums go. The 58's pretty good. But if you want to go that way, you can split off right there. You get to the 132 and then to the WZ-132-1, which is a bunch of crazy numbering for very similar tanks. Let's go ahead and jump into the comparisons. Right off the bat, we're going to see that the average damage on the WZ-132A is 320, and the rest of the tanks are either 240 or 250. So right off the bat, the alpha off of this tank is much better. You're going to pay for that, though, with a lower rate of fire. You can see that it's 6.8. So it takes a long time to reload at 8.82. That's the worst of all of them. That means that when you're brawling, you're going to have quite a long reload. So if you're relying on that kind of scout idea where you jump in and quickly shoot people, you don't really get that with the 132 Alpha. It's more like a medium as far as the time frame goes. And of course, it doesn't have the same hit points or staying power armor-wise as a medium does. So you do have to be careful about that. Tur Traverse is the worst, actually, out of its peers. It's not terrible. 41 is good. Gun depression, though, kind of hurts it. Only minus 5. Plus 20 is good. But if you're going to be working ridges or getting the nose of your tank up on rubble or something, you do have to watch for the dispersion getting in the way. Aim time is not bad, and you've got the dispersion at 0.4, which is the worst. So while the aim time is fairly high and the dispersion is the worst, you're going to find that this gun tends to be, other than the T-49 derp itself, one of the more derpy guns at this tier for scouts. It's a lot like, actually, the 1390, even though the 1390 has been improved but you're taking that you know, 320 average damage per shot kind of shot, whereas the 1390 is going to, if it's still got a shot in its clip, have another shot right away. So you do have to take care with this tank a little bit more maybe than the RU, the 49 with the 90mm or the T-54. Its accuracy can be a problem at times, but you'll note that if you do hit end pen, then the average DPM is right in there with the rest of them. I've noted it on all the other reviews the t49 is just a complete outlier right here for whatever reason 
Getting into the hit points, though, unfortunately, it's one of the lower. Only the 1390 has less, which is interesting because it is quite a large tank. It's on the size of the T-54 or the 251. And this is where we get into what I mentioned early between the T-54 Lightweight and the WZ-132 Alpha. Although they look similar and they're both kind of clones off of Russian tanks, be very careful not to believe that the WZ-132A has that kind of armor capability that the T-54 Lightweight does. Because if you'll note that, the hole is a less, 50 and 25, whereas the Lightweight is 80 and 60. But this is where the big deal is. The T-54 Lightweight running with that 180 on the front of its turret, whereas the th one 132 Alpha has no such thing. So it's running with a fairly soft turret. So if you think you're going to do that kind of peak and hold down action that occasionally the T-54 Lightweight can get away with and get those occasional troll bounces, you do not have that capability really in the 132 Alpha. Now, 55 is not terrible. It's better than the rest of the three other than the Lightweight, but it's certainly not on the order of the 180 as the T-54 has. So while the T-54 can often swing to that medium roll and do it quite capably, the WZ-132 Alpha has to be more careful when you do that. Even though you've got that big Alpha hitting gun, you really don't have the armor and the hit points to back it up. So it's a bit of a tricky tank as far as that goes when you swing from scout roll to medium roll. And it makes it kind of uncomfortable at times to play. For the mobility, it is not bad. You can see that its weight and load limit is kind of right in there. 770 on the engine horsepower and the specific power at 32.08 is not terrible. It's not the worst. Uh, 64 miles an hour down towards the bottom, obviously, in speed. You will find then, what does that mean? It is pretty zippy, but it's not maneuverable on the order of the T-54 Lightweight, where the T-54 Lightweight feels just really nimble. The WZ-132 Alpha is similar, but just a little bit more sluggish as far as how it can kind of spin around things and, and circle. So, again, when you play it like a lightweight, where you're getting into the medium roll, it's just a little bit less capable as far as the maneuver goes. You come down here to the concealment, you'll find that it's decent, not amazing. Uh, 16, there you go. And then the spotting range, which is one of the more arbitrary numbers that they use. You know, all this other stuff is, is pretty historical and they do their best. I mean, it's got to be balanced, but they sort of look at what the tank act design actually was. When you get down here, this is very subjective. They're sort of looking at where the commander sits and what his equipment is and where are the view slots and then they come up with some kind of relatively arbitrary number and for whatever reason they've given the WZ-132 Alpha 390 which is kind of ridiculous because it suffers in a lot of other cases why there's two tanks that have 20 more than it does I'll never know it's just a really strange number but there you go and then we get to the signal range the most useless number in the entire game to be quite honest after tier 5 I don't even know why that's there because it just doesn't matter. It would be interesting if they rewickered those numbers and made radios matter somehow, but that is another topic for another day. All right, so there's the comparison. How do I have mine set up? It is maxed out, obviously, on all the different equipment. I am running a rammer, I am running vents, and I am running optics. And you'll note that if you've looked at my other four reviews, I typically run with some binox and some camo. This is more of an offensive kind of setup. I'm not really setting this up for passive scouting. It's quite a large tank. Its view range isn't the most amazing. So this is more of an active scout. Play it more like an active medium with some scouting capabilities. You'll see that I've got 28 AP, 10 APCR, and 2 HE for giggles in there. And I've got a normal repair kit, normal med kit, and an automatic fire extinguisher. You could run food, but this thing does have a tendency to light on fire, so it's probably a good idea to have that automatic fire extinguisher, extinguisher along with you. And that is basically how I have this set up. Let's go into some gameplay. Here we are with the gameplay now with the WZ-132 Alpha. You'll see that I have loaded into Tundra in the Tier 9 Chinese Scout Tank, Light Tank, and I am in a Tier 10, Tier 9 battle with quite a bit of artillery out there, some TDs and some heavy fat kids we've got to deal with. I'm going to head over to the east side to the hill. It's a fast tank, the WZ-132 Alpha. Unfortunately, I run into him. So it can get to those important critical pieces of terrain pretty quickly. And the good news is it brings a decent amount of firepower with it with that 320 Alpha gun average damage. So we're going to head on up here. I'll see my 251 buddy head up there already 21390. So I want to be careful here. I bounce a 1390. That's unfortunate. 
Lots of goofy angles on the 1390s turret right there, and I may have hit its gun, but in any event, no damage. I'm going to come in here, and unfortunately, I exposed myself right to that little notch right there, which is overall not a great idea, and the 260 takes advantage of that. Now, he's fired, so I'm going to back up. He looks like he's going to give me a shot, and I'll put one right there and light him on fire. So that nice alpha is going to have a little bit better time damaging uh, modules in there. That is one benefit of it. And now I'm just looking for a way to get in here, although I have eaten a pretty big hit and lost a considerable amount of my hit points right off the bat. Now I don't want to go up the hill with the T-49 looking at me. For whatever reason, their 155-55 is out in the open right there. I don't want to get in the way of the big kids, so I don't jam myself in. And then I get artied by the GW Tiger, naturally. And 49 fired, so he's running. You can see that I've got that stun issue going on, but I do put a shot on the 49, and now I can drive up the hill and hopefully my stun will go away here real quick and I can get back into the fight. So we have taken the hill with not too many tanks actually. They didn't really seriously push in here and try to take us. This 1390's come up the back door trying to get up and over but he's been stymied. These two are running off. Nobody really went up here TD wise. So you're going to see that the nice speed, the decent vision or spotting and the pretty good alpha on this tank when there's nobody keeping you from getting into the backfield is going to start to play a part. I'm going to come down here. we got that 1390 up on the hill. And I mentioned this gun is pretty derpy. I'll go ahead and auto-aim him real quick. I just Wow, did I just get it past that AMX-30. So sometimes RNG is your friend. Not really the highest percentage shot for this tank based on the derpy gun. But it can be done. You can kind of take those fleeting shots with it. Got a guy running, can't quite get to him, so I'll use these bushes right here so I can get some spotting. And yep, that's what I'm looking for. Got to be some arty guys back in here. Pop him. 284. Uh, okay. 284. <laughs> and back on out of there. Now a little bit of mountain goading, so if you're into that thing, this tank does have some pretty good power. It can get up onto spots like this. 53, 55 is in trouble. Looks like the AMX is on him. So I'll climb up onto this hill right here and start looking for more shots. The 704, we'll see. No, nope, he's behind a rock. Can't do anything with him. 53, 55 is going to spot me because I came up a little early, but I'm able to hit the WT. Now, a lot of times you can get erased right off of this hill, especially if there's a couple TDs back there where the WT is. Just be careful doing this. I'm just taking a chance. Back up and around, see if I can actually get back in here. And on this one, I don't even let it zoom in all the way. So while the gun is a little bit derpy, once it starts to zoom in, that is a decent shot. Remember that with the dispersion model the way it is, stuff will tend towards the middle. It's more likely to hit in the middle than it is somewhere else. Towards the middle, let's put it this way. Not hit in the middle, but towards the middle. It will group around the middle. All right, so the 704 is across the bridge. Looks like the patent's got him. Initially, I'm thinking, well, we're ahead, but not too far ahead. And their fat kids are all together, so maybe I'll just cap. I sort of look at this for a second and think, no, nah, nah, I don't think so. I think we can clean these guys up. Let me get around there and see if I can help our heavies. You see the AMX-30 is sort of heading in that direction. I think he gets enamored of the T-95. I'll ignore the T-95. Spotted on the way by, but I'm able to get behind the 100 and the 110E5. And now the alpha on this thing is going to make a bit of a difference here. I'm going to come in. Got the gold going. I'm able to go right through. I should have shot the back of the turret. Would have been a much safer shot as far as pen goes. The 100 doesn't have any good choices. He's just ignoring me for the moment, seeing if he can, seeing if he can put his gun on somebody and get some more damage. But I'll just go ahead and pop him one more time in the turret, and then somebody else finishes him. And we'll scoot on out of here. And now you're seeing, of course, the thing about a scout running as a medium in cleanup phase right here is they, they're just a bit faster, and they tend to get to the damage a little bit faster than the mediums do. So while you have an issue with staying power, and, and often your alpha is a little bit lower, sometimes the speed to get into the fight is really what you need. This guy will come around and just put that right into his side with a little more damage. And, of course, right at the end, I have to get splashed by my own arty who inexplicably needs to fire into the rest of his team and damage them or stun them in order to get that kill. In any event, we end up winning this one, two kills, I think somewhere around 3,000 damage. So you can see the WZ-132 Alpha run as more of a medium hybrid or a fast medium with a little bit of stealth going on. Very capable in that, row, in that role. It's a great Tier 9 scout. 
Uh, highly recommend it. Plus, that line will get you to two endgame tier 10 tanks, so it's probably worth an investment. I hope this helped. If you like what you see, make sure you subscribe, and we will see you.